Hey everybody, Happy New Year, and welcome to my Top 10 Toys of 2023 video. So, I really appreciate you watching this video. I know a lot of uh, toy collectors like to put out their Top 10 or Top 20 or just favorite toys of the year, and I actually think it's really fun as well. Um, it's a really nice way to kind of reflect on the year that was in toy collecting and kind of just decide what your own personal favorites of the year were. So, of course, this is my top 10 list of the year, and I would love to know what you all think of my list, and I would love to know what you agree with and what you disagree with and what your top 10 toys of the year are as well. So I am going to go in order here from number 10 to number 1, and they are in order of basically how much I love the figure. So number 10 is the Masters of the Universe Origins Tongue Lasher figure. Now this is a fairly, you know, simple, cheap figure. It was pretty easy to uh, obtain. Um, but I've got to say that Tongue Lasher was one of my favorite Motu toys as a kid, and like most toy collectors, I really collect and buy based out of nostalgia. So if there is a certain character or a certain toy that I just absolutely love and brings back really great childhood memories then I'm going to get it. <laughs> so that's why Tongue Lasher here is number 10. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite of the Motu Origins figures of all. And I did actually buy two of these, one to open, one to keep on card. Um, and again, it's just pure nostalgia. Love that toy as a kid. I loved how his tongue kind of went in and out. This one doesn't have that feature. The tongue basically plugs in. Um, but that's neat because you can kind of let the tongue go up or down, depending on how you want to plug it in. And I just love the colors on this figure. I love the purple and pink. Um, it's just a really great, well-done Origins figure. So Tongue Lasher is number 10. Coming in at number 9 is a very different type of figure. It is the Mafex Magneto figure. So, uh, for any of you who do not collect Mafex figures, um, they are very pricey. Um, it does take quite a while for them to come out. And uh, this is only the second Mafex figure that I own. Um, last year I got the Cyborg Superman figure, and then this year I got the Magneto figure. Now, Magneto is not only my favorite Marvel character, he is probably my favorite villain across all properties. So, my favorite comic book villain, probably my favorite villain of all time. I just love his backstory and his philosophy and, uh, you know, nothing more dangerous than a very powerful villain who thinks that everything they do is actually morally justified and uh just love the character it's a character with a lot of depth and of course he's been portrayed uh by a couple different uh very good actors in movies and um you know probably first fell in love with the character from the x-men animated series um and uh yeah i'm not a huge marvel guy but magneto definitely is a character that i love so i had to get this figure even though it was pretty pricey um, absolutely worth it. Um, he's got alternate heads. He's got a fantastic, uh, cloth cape with a wire, uh, you know, power effects. Uh, it is an absolute beautiful figure. Um, ever since I got this figure and kind of posed him and, and been messing with him, um, you know, I've just kind of left him on the end table in my living room. I haven't really had a place to put him because I don't have a Mafex collection. And of course I have a couple different versions of Magneto, uh, for my Marvel Legends. So he's just kind of a standalone figure that hangs out, uh, you know, in the living room and just, he's almost kind of a showpiece. 
Um, but highly recommend this figure and uh, absolutely my favorite figure of Magneto. And this one is coming in at number nine on my top 10 list for 2023. Next, we're going to go back to the Masters of the Universe, but this time it is going to be a Masterverse figure. So this is the Masterverse Whiplash figure. So Whiplash is a, another figure that I really liked in the Vintage line as a kid. Of course, he is green, he is reptilian, uh, he looks pretty scary, so of course that is a figure that I would gravitate to as a little kid because I love that stuff. Um, this axe actually comes from a totally different toy line, which we will definitely be talking about in a little bit here. Um, but yeah, it's just, this is definitely my favorite Masterverse figure of the year, uh, by far. Um, I just love this figure. It's very well done, very well detailed. He came with like an alternate suit of armor, uh, because again, this is a new Eternia version of Whiplash, um, so you could outfit him in, like, this purple armor. Uh, I elected to not put that armor on him because I wanted just a more regular, kind of classic-looking Whiplash, um, and, uh, but I love it. I love that he came with the armor. I put the armor on a different figure, and, uh, he just looks great. I love his, you know, big giant tail that you can, you know, move around, and, uh, he's nice and solid and just a very formidable, uh, looking bad guy, to have on the shelf and uh, just very, very cool figure. So Whiplash is number eight. We're gonna stay in the Masters of the Universe for one more figure here, and that is going to be Ratlore. So number seven is the Origins Ratlore figure, and uh, this one may surprise a lot of people because again, a pretty basic figure, a uh, pretty cheap figure, um, but I absolutely adored the vintage Ratlore figure. That was one of those toys when I was little, uh, I took him everywhere with me. I just remember, I just loved how he, you know, made the rattling noise. I loved his weird, you know, kind of tail. Um, and I just loved the red, you know, I just always thought that that deep red color of Ratlore was just really, really cool. And of course, the vintage figure, this one doesn't do it, but the vintage figure, you could push the button on the back and the head would pop out. And I loved that as a gimmick. Um, so just again, this is a pure nostalgia choice for me. Um, I just love Ratlore. And I think the Origins version is a fantastic upgrade to the vintage. Um, he did come with the extra neck piece. So I actually have bought... Uh, a couple rat lures for customizing, using the neck piece and the heads for other figures. Um, so, you know, if you're buying, you know, if you're buying two or three of the exact same figure just to play around with different versions of it and to have different versions, you know that it's a great figure. So coming in at number seven is the Origins Rat Lure. And I mean, you just got to love a figure that makes noise that you can, you know, bother your siblings with. All right, so coming in at number six, uh, pretty different than what we've had so far, number six is the G.I. Joe Classified Shipwreck figure. So for me, the G.I. Joe figures are something that has been a very interesting turn of events in my toy collecting life for 2023, because I was never, ever into G.I. Joe at all as a kid. Um, I was, uh, you know, a little bit too young at first, and then, um, you know, I was really into Thundercats, I was a little bit into He-Man, and then I was super into Ninja Turtles, and I was just never ever into G.I. Joe. Never got into it at all. Never into the toys, the comics, the cartoon, nothing. And then um, last year, one of my top toys of the year was the Serpentor figure, and it was very well done. It was a very cool looking figure. And that set me on a journey of watching the cartoon, learning more about G.I. Joe. And I have amassed a huge collection of G.I. Joe classified figures. And I've even very dangerously been dabbling in some vintage G.I. Joe figures. Um, so 
Shipwreck here has become one of my absolute favorite characters in the cartoon. Uh, I think he is absolutely hilarious. I love his banter with his parrot Polly. And I just think this figure is amazingly well done. I mean, the details on the face and all of his accessories and just the, you know, articulation. And, of course, Polly looks amazing. Now, I did get a different hand because uh, I really wanted him to be posed this way, like basically pointing at Polly, kind of like giving him, you know, some attitude. Um, so, yeah, so that hand did not come with him. But I just think this figure is great. I mean, I've been shocked to see this figure, you know, going on clearance and popping up at Ross because, I mean, this figure is fantastic. So, really love this figure. Uh, he's coming in at number six. And, uh, yeah, if you did not watch my Toy Room Tour video of the year, you can check out how out of control my G.I. Joe Classified collection has gotten in a very short period of time. So, coming in at number five, we have to go to the Power Rangers universe and check out the Power Rangers Lightning Collection Minotaur figure. So, this is one of the more deluxe offerings from Lightning Collection, uh, one of the monster figures. And he is a big boy, and he is very well sculpted and detailed, and I just absolutely love him this figure. Uh, it is by far my favorite Power Ranger figure of the year uh, from Hasbro, I should say. Um, and it is just, uh, it, it's, it's so well done and it fits in with so many other places because you can really just use it as kind of a monster, a beast, a minotaur. Um, you know, you can put it with Marvel Legends, you can put it with DC, you can put it with, um, you know, Mythic Legions. Um, he just, he goes with so many other toy lines, you don't necessarily have to use him with Power Rangers, but uh, obviously this is a Season 1 uh, Power Ranger villain. Uh, he had a 5-inch figure made in the Vintage line, which I also really love that uh, Vintage figure. So, uh, you know, kind of a must-have uh, with the uh, Mighty Morphin fans. Um, it's just a very well-done figure. I mean, the details here, he's got his tail. Um, you know, his weapons are real nice. Um, it's, it's just a nice, uh, you know, it's a thick, heavy figure. Uh, he's nice and big, and uh, it, it's just a really great figure. So there you go. Coming in at number five is Power Ranger Lightning Collection Minotaur. Okay, so number four is a pricey one, but an awesome one. It is the Mezco 112th Collective Superman figure. So I was very, very much on the fence about this one. Um, I think I actually had it pre-ordered and canceled and pre-ordered and canceled uh, probably three times. Uh, very pricey figure. Um, this is, uh, my very first and only Mezco figure, uh, so obviously not a big Mezco collector, uh, you know, because of price, uh, they're, they're just very pricey figures, but I have zero regrets getting this, it is absolutely the best, most beautiful, classic Superman figure in my collection, and if you watch my collection video, you know that I have an enormous Superman collection. Um, I have lots and lots of Superman figures of all kinds of scales and shapes and companies. And I gotta say, this one's my favorite. Um, it's just, the colors are beautiful. The soft goods are great. Um, you know, the, the face sculpt is, I mean, it's perfect. It's Superman. Um, you know, the posing is just, I mean, it's hard to describe. Um, you know, I watched a lot of reviews before, you know, dedicating that much money to a six inch figure. And, um, you know, people, it's, it's true what people say. You don't know what these figures feel like until you get one. Um, just, they feel amazing. The, uh, you know, articulation and the soft goods, it's incredible. 
on top of that, he came in a really nice tin metal box with all kinds of accessories, alternate heads, power effects. He has a magnet in his chest so you can make it look like bullets are bouncing off of him. Um, just an incredible figure. So you really do get, uh, you know, the, the bang for your buck. It's expensive, but you get lots of different accessories, uh, a beautiful flight stand, um, you know, a set of different types of kryptonite, um, just all kinds of awesome stuff. So definitely Mezco Superman, beautiful figure, number four on my list. So then it gets kind of interesting um, because I really kind of went back and forth here with the top three. And for number three, I wasn't even going to put this on there at all, but I just decided I had to. So coming in at number three is the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Movie 3 box set. So I have Raphael here. Uh, as a uh, representative of that box set, because of course, as we all know, Raphael is the best turtle. So I was not going to put this box set on my list at all because I thought it was a little unfair considering you get four figures and of course it was very pricey and it was, uh, I believe it was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. It was some sort of exclusive. You had to order it, you know, through the NECA website and all that kind of stuff. So I really wasn't going to put it in my top 10 list of the year at all. And then I thought, you know what, this is my list. I'm going to do what I want. And when I got this box set and I started opening it, I mean, literally almost got tears in my eyes. Like, I loved the TMNT 3 movie. I know a lot of people have certain feelings about it. And honestly, that's fine. You can have your own opinions. Um... I loved all three movies. Um, the first movie, honestly, it scared me a little. Um, you know, I saw it in the theater. I was eight years old. Um, and it, it scared me a little. I also was scared of the first Batman movie a little. I was the same, basically the same age when the first Batman movie came out. Saw that in the theater, and it freaked me out a little bit. Um, I thought, you know, got a couple years older. Loved Batman Returns. Loved Secret of the Ooze. Uh, I actually prefer those two sequels over the two original movies, which I know I'm kind of in the minority for that as well. And then TMNT 3, I loved it. I loved the time travel aspect. I loved all the samurai gear. Uh, you know, I loved, I loved it. I really did. So actually what I did is uh, once I started opening the box set, I actually put uh, TMNT 3, the movie, put it on, watched the movie while I opened up the box set and, uh, you know, played around with the accessories, played around with how I wanted to pose the figures. And I'm telling you, that was probably one of the best nights of my year, was just opening up that box set, watching that movie again, a movie I have not seen in many, many years. And... I still loved it. I loved every minute of it. I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed the ridiculous humor and the whole just ridiculous plot. Um, it was great. And uh, I just said to myself, you know what? These toys are fantastic. The soft goods, the details, all the accessories you get. I mean, it, ha it had to go on the list. And honestly... If it wasn't an exclusive box set, and if it didn't have all those extra bells and whistles, uh, it would be my number one, uh, for sure. Um, just from the feelings and the nostalgia that it gave me, um, but I just thought it was an unfair comparison, because how can you compare, you know, a four-pack, an exclusive four-pack in a box set with all those extra bells and whistles that meant so much to me. Like, how can you compare it with other stuff? It's kind of unfair. Uh, so I put it in there at number three. Uh, it's kind of number one in my heart, but kind of intellectually, it's going to be at number three. So there you go. The NECA TMNT3 movie box set at number three. So at number two, again, I'm kind of breaking the rules a little bit here. So, I'm going to put this figure up here. This is the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Vero Atlas. 
Um, so this is my number two figure of the year. Uh, but I am going to say that Animal Warriors of the Kingdom is absolutely my favorite toy line of 2023. So as just a toy line from kind of start to finish, collectively, Animal Warriors of the Kingdom definitely is number one for me. Now the reason that this figure is not number one is because there is no nostalgic connection. This is a brand new property. Uh, this is something that Spiro Toys has basically, you know, it's their brainchild. It's their creation. Uh, there is a set of comic books that go along with the figures. This is a Kickstarter that I supported from day one. The figures are amazing. They have great paint details. They have really great weapons. Um, now, this cape is actually from the Kali figure. That sword is from, I do believe that is a Masters of the Universe Classics figure. And then the power effect is from a Lightning Collection, Power Ranger Lightning Collection figure. So you can see that I've kind of outfitted him with a few different things from a couple different figures. But the White Tiger with the purple armor, it just looks beautiful. So this, it's very, very hard for me to kind of say what my favorite figure from AWOC is. Um, because I just like different aspects of different figures. So it's very hard to just say it's this one. Um, but I gotta go with Vero Atlas. Uh, he just looks so cool. Plus with some of the little kind of things I've added to him, it kind of really, uh, gave it a little bit more of a personal, you know, kind of, uh, you know, flair for me. But I've got to say, if you have not gotten any of the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom figures yet, just get a couple of them. I mean, you can put them anywhere. You can put them with Marvel, DC, uh, you know, Turtles. You can put them with Thundercat Ultimates. You can put them with G.I. Joe. You, they, they can go anywhere, okay? They, they fit in with any six-inch figure line because they can either be regular six-inch size or they can be a little bigger because they are a little bigger than, say, like G.I. Joe Classified or, you know, most Marvel Legends, but then they're kind of like the same size as, say, like uh, Thundercats Ultimates or, um, you know, like uh, TMNT NECA. So it's just, it's a fantastic line, and because it's something new and different, you can kind of develop your own headcanon, and that's what I've done is, you know, I've posed these with some Thundercats, and they've kind of been like ancient Thundarians, um, you know, I posed them with some Power Rangers. They could be friends. They could be enemies to the Power Rangers. Uh, they're just fantastic figures, and they're very well done. Uh, if you want to know more, you can check out my um, reviews, because I have done reviews of all the waves of Animal Warriors of the Kingdoms on my channel. Uh, really, really fantastic figures. Definitely the toy line of the year for me, but coming in at number two... Because our number one figure of 2023 is Super 7's Ultimates Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Goldar figure. Now, this one is my favorite figure of the year for quite a few reasons. First of all, it is a big, bulky, heavy, beautiful figure. Um, when I first got this figure, it was early 2023, and I said to myself, I don't know how I'm going to put this figure on a shelf and not be able to look at this figure every single day, because it's beautiful, it's well done, um, I did a review video on it, and I just gushed about it, um, you know, I always tell people, be real careful with the wings, Make sure you heat them up real, real good and put them in carefully because the pegs could break. But, you know, I give Super 7 a lot of grief and I'm very critical of Super 7 with a lot of their decisions they make and sometimes their figures do not come out very good. But this one is absolutely gorgeous. So, um... Yeah, just he comes with alternate heads. 
Um, the, the gold paint is beautiful. It is a perfect, you know, rendition from the TV show. And I gotta say, it hits that nostalgia button too, because I said in my uh, Toy Room Tour video with my Power Rangers stuff, you know, Power Rangers is a very interesting kind of uh, mental space for me because it was, uh, you know, I was that age where I was really kind of getting out of toys. I was, you know, going into high school and I didn't, you know, even though obviously I was a big nerd in high school, uh, you know, I didn't want people to, to, you know, say things about me and I felt a certain kind of way about collecting toys and playing with toys and everything and, and you know, being 12, 13 years old and going into high school, um, you know, because... I spent so much time with Thundercats and, uh, you know, He-Man and absolutely Ninja Turtles, you know, and then when Ninja Turtles kind of started to wane and I got into Power Rangers, it was really, you know, the beginning of the end for me. So a lot of the first couple of seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, I loved it, but I also kind of had to start moving away from it a little bit. So this Goldar figure, you know, representing that, you know, one of the main bad guys who is basically in every episode of the first three seasons in some capacity or another, it's just a beautiful kind of reminder of the end of my childhood, the beginning of my adolescence, and, you know, this is an adult collectible, so it's, you know, you pose it, and uh, you just leave it, and it's beautiful. So it hits that nostalgia button. It's a very well done figure. Um, and that is why the Super 7 Goldar is my number one figure of 2023. So there you go. I don't know uh, if I'm going to be able to do this or not, but I kind of wanted to see if I could bring in as many as possible here for kind of a group shot of just all my favorite figures of the year. Um, you know, lots of different properties represented. Uh, you know, mostly six-inch scale, but not all of them. And, uh, yeah, we've got a couple Power Ranger villains. We've got a couple... Masters of the Universe guys in here. We're running out of room already. We've got probably my favorite villain of all time here. So, yeah, I think that's about all I'm going to fit here. Um, but, yeah, so let me know what you think of my top ten list. Uh, let me know uh, what your list is. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic New Year's Day, and I hope everybody has an awesome 2024. Keep watching the channel. Feel free to like and subscribe, and here's to a great new year. Take care, everybody.